I would love to tell you that you don't have to make any sacrifices at all to meet your financial goals. I'd also like to tell you that unicorns are real and donuts grow on trees and that crush that you were secretly crushing on was secretly crushing on you all along but I can't. Unfortunately, we all have to make choices about what we choose to spend money on. So today we're gonna talk about nine items that you think you need to buy, but I promise you, you don't. I'm Melissa Ford. Welcome to Damsel of Success, where we talk about all things money. Please be sure to like and subscribe and hit the bell to be notified when I post a new video every single Wednesday. So here are nine things that I don't think you need to buy. And you're probably like, but Melissa, I want to enjoy my life, YOLO or whatever. And I get that. I actually do get that. Like you should have a fun time in your life. But I'm specifically singling out these items because I don't think they're going to make a difference to you one way or another. I don't think they're actually going to improve your life. On the other hand, saving for retirement absolutely will affect your life. And I promise you, you won't be screaming YOLO if you don't have a retirement savings. These are all things that I've either never bought have stopped buying in my life or almost never, ever, ever indulge in. And hopefully they'll inspire you to either, you know, choose not to buy these items as well or come up with other things in your life that you can sacrifice so that you can reach those financial goals that you have. So let's get right into this. Item number one on my list is name brand makeup. So I know a lot of you out there really like your name brands and some of you might even consider yourself makeupaholics. Um, I definitely have somebody in my family who knows exactly who I'm talking about. Um, who really just loves her makeup. And if that's the case for you, then, you know, this isn't the place to, to cut. But if you're not a super into makeup fashionista kind of person, then, you know, why are you spending so much money on this name brand stuff? Um, I have found personally that if I splurge a little on foundation and lipstick, everything else I can get at like a Walgreens for much, much cheaper and it does the job just fine. Item number two on my list is food delivery. Now it's super nice to call up a local restaurant that cooks like the most amazing pot pie or whatever it is that you like and have it delivered to your door. But um, in my mind, that is just, it's just so much money because you're paying a fee to the service that you are ordering it on. You're paying a fee to the driver. You're probably also tipping the driver if you're a good person person you're tipping the driver and all of that just really hits the cost of your meal it's making it so much more expensive especially when you have another option and that option is to just go to the restaurant pick it up for carry out it's probably a lot faster than you think it is even if you really really do not feel like getting up off the couch significantly cheaper or you know better yet just make a nice meal at home. One of my favorite tricks is to keep some junk food in the freezer because if I'm having one of those nights where I don't wanna cook, I absolutely don't wanna cook and I want something that's bad for me and I know I'm gonna like, you know, wanna order food in, then I can just throw something, you know, taquitos or whatever it is into the oven and it's gonna be a much like, it's gonna, A, it's gonna be warm when it gets to me um, and it's gonna cook faster and cost me a lot less money. like probably probably a tenth of the cost of what it would cost me personally to order Mexican food to be delivered to my house. Item number three is one I think is so easy to do and it's good for you, it's good for the environment, and that is to stop buying bottled water. It's so easy just to keep a couple of water bottles that are reusable on hand in your refrigerator completely cold and ready to drink all the time. It's just not that hard and it's less waste and you're not paying, you know, sometimes like $1.50 or $2 a bottle or, you know, if you're getting the fancy, fancy waters, like you can, you can spend up to $5 or $6 or I think I've seen it at, at I want to say I've seen like an $8 bottle of water. Like what are you putting in that water that makes it worth $8? It just blows my mind silly. So unless you're living in an area where your water supply is contaminated, then skip the bottled water. So what's something that you're thinking about right now that you think you could probably ditch off of your spending list? Um, you know, what's what's something you could save money on that's not going to make much of a difference in your life? Let me know. I want to know. Please tell me and just, you know, don't overthink it. Just write it in the comments and let me know what you're thinking. Item number four is one that I have been so guilty of on multiple occasions, and that is new hobby equipment. 
So whether it's, you know, picking up painting or a new sport, kayaking, whatever it is, my gut instinct is to go out and buy, you know, the all the equipment I need to to start that hobby. And, you know, oftentimes it turns out I don't actually enjoy it. It just like seemed like a good idea and I only use it a couple times and then it's wasted. That money is wasted and gone. So now what I like to do is to hit up Craigslist or hit up the Goodwill and see if it's something that I like first before I make an investment in equipment. And you know, my rule is just like, you know, try it out used first. If you like the equipment and you're using it on a regular basis and you think you're going to continue to keep using it, then by all means upgrade when it makes sense. But don't drop a lot of money into a new hobby that you're not sure if you're going to like or not. Item number five is one that I think makes the least difference to your lifestyle, and that is buying a new car versus a used car. Now, I think we all know that new cars lose their value right away. As soon as you drive it off the lot and it's not new anymore, you lose money on that investment. And to me, it just doesn't make sense to give up that value when you don't have to. When you can get, you know, a, a car that's a couple of years old or, you know, however, however far back you're comfortable buying, I'm personally comfortable buying you know, things that are significantly older because cars just aren't important to me in my budget. But if they are important to you, then, you know, you can definitely save a ton of money by just settling for last year's model over this year's model. Okay, here comes item number six. Please don't yell at me, but I think that it doesn't make a lot of sense to buy purebred puppies from a breeder. Um, part of that is that there are so many dogs and cats out there that are available for adoption. I would personally just love to see all those babies snatched up before you know we we move to purebreds. Um, but the other part of it is that like why why do you have to have a purebred puppy? Like unless you are unless you're super into dogs and maybe showing dogs, then I don't think that makes sense for most people. And I think that it can kind of become almost like a designer handbag where you're like, I have a purebred whatever. And in that instance, it's almost like you're buying it to impress other people rather than buying a dog that is for you to care about and love because chances are pretty great that whatever dog you choose to bring into your house, you're gonna love it. And mutts are the best anyway, right? Some of you might disagree with this next one too, but it saves me somewhere between $700 and $2,500 a year. So for me, I'm sticking to it. And that brings us to item number seven, which is pricey gym memberships or gym memberships at all. Now, I know that there are a lot of people out there that are super into fitness. And if you're one of them, you know, like I said about all of these items, you give up what you want to give up or what you can give up easily without making a huge sacrifice. And if you are a gym rat, then that would be a huge sacrifice to you. But if you're not, if you're more like me, and you buy that gym membership, particularly at the beginning of the year when you have all these goals around getting more fit, but your record shows that you don't actually go very often, like, like I do, then it just doesn't make sense. It doesn't, it just doesn't make sense to buy them. So why would you spend, you know, anywhere from 20 to $300 on a gym membership every month when you don't have to, when you're not using it. I find that, you know, going for a walk or going for a run, or, you know, I, I have a few workout videos at home when I actually do get the motivation to exercise, which is very rarely, but you know, it happens sometimes or could, I suppose. Either way, my recommendation is skip that gym membership if it's just an idealistic thing that's going to make you feel better about your life choices and not actually make better life choices. Item number eight on my list is a storage unit. Now I have definitely, definitely been guilty of having one of these in the past where I'm not sure, you know, where I'm going to move to. And so I, I keep stuff in a storage unit for a while and then I settle in and then slowly take things out. Well, I can tell you, I got rid of my storage unit this year and I'm done with them. I'm just done because if I'm not using it, if it's not in my house and in my life, then why am I paying to use it? It doesn't make any sense. And a lot of times it just doesn't make financial sense at all. How much are you spending to keep that couch that you got from, you know, your grandma um, in storage when you could go buy a new couch for half of the price of what you'd pay for storage in a year? It just doesn't add up. The math does not 
ever end up in your favor. And I think that you'll feel better, you'll feel cleaner, you'll feel more organized if you just ditch the storage unit and say goodbye to the things that you don't need. Okay, that brings us to item number nine. And this one, I'm gonna tell you it's gonna be a new one for me. I'm trying it out, we'll see how it goes. It's also a little bit funny, but the thing that I'm hoping that I don't have to buy in the future is toilet paper. And that's because I recently purchased a bidet. I know, it's kind of weird to talk about, but I think it's something that could potentially save me money in the long run. I, I believe I spent around $45 on this bidet, and I spend probably somewhere in the range of $60 to $100 on toilet paper every year. So I'm thinking it's gonna pay for itself after just a few months, but we'll see. I will let you know if it works out. So those are my nine items that I think aren't gonna impact your life significantly to give up. And you know, like I've been saying throughout this video, if one of those things is really important to you, cut back in other areas. You don't have to do this exactly the way I am, but hopefully it's gonna give you a little bit of inspiration to kind of identify items in your life you can give up so that you can get what you actually really want. You do have to make choices about what you wanna spend your money on, but the good news is that you are the one that's making those choices. No matter where you are right now in your financial journey, it's those choices that you're making on a day-to-day -day basis. They're gonna either get you closer to your goals or farther away. So get out there and start making choices that align with what you want your life to look like. And if you haven't quite figured out yet what your financial priorities are, that's okay. I have a worksheet that will help you do just that. It's um, how to build a money mission statement, which is kind of like, you know, a business mission statement only for you and your personal finances. Um, and I think it'll really help you to clarify what those goals are so that the choices are easier to make. You don't feel like you, you are, are saying no to yourself. You're feeling like you say yes to something even better. And I'll post a link to that money mission statement spreadsheet in the comments below. If you liked this video, please hit the like button. I'd so appreciate it. And if you loved the video, please subscribe. I'm gonna be posting new videos every Wednesday about how to reach your financial goals, and I'd love to have you along for the ride. That's all for now. See you soon.